Hey there, and welcome back to Trainwreck, an educational monster train series where you watch me struggle at around 200 pack shards. Not much really to update you on today, besides this being a very large recording day for me. I've just got a lot going on that I've been doing, working through. I'm trying to build up some semblance of a backlog, so I quote-unquote backlog. I say this all the time. I'm basically trying to avoid having to record the morning before I put up a video, and it's caught me a few times, so I'm just dedicating some days and making some good progress on this. And so far, it's been pretty good. Made a lot of headway, so I've got a couple weeks ready to go. Now, this video that you're seeing now is actually maybe on the tail end of that couple weeks, so hopefully I've kept up the trend and haven't fallen behind. But if I do, you'll find out soon in another video, so... Anyway, what the heck are we doing? This is a train wreck episode. That means we are playing... What were we on last time? I think it was Titan Channel? No, it was Cold Channel. That's right. We had... I think this was actually a very smartly played run. We had some Incant slash Inspire gameplay. There was a Cold Channel with two Carver infused into a multi-strike... This is so hard to describe. There's a Shard Soul Carver Infusion with Multi-Strike, Incant Armor 2, all inside of a Nameless Siren. We had Hot Shark playing a nice role in here as well, and some great Bounding Echo gameplay going on. So a lot of just hit all the cards, Inspire, Incant, hold it together. And I'm glad I played the way I did because I don't think we would have survived otherwise. It is a line that struggles into sweeping divinity because I didn't have, you know, days or sap or one of those other tools at my disposal. So I was ultimately at, at its mercy of taking 17 around on everything. That requires a lot of incant inspires in order to keep ahead. So pretty crazy, but we did pull it off. Oh boy, that actually means we're moving into Fade. Oh no, I lied. It's not Fade, it's Primordium. Well, Fade soon. Primordium now. Still gonna be really good though. I think that this is a very strong stretch. You've got Fade, you've got Primordium, and then, well, the stretch ends at Echo Right where it becomes mediocre again. But, but yeah, we'll see how we do today. So as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And here we go. Let's see how Primordium fares today. Yeah. I recently did some recording actually on, was it Astria, the six-sided oracles? I only did a one-time one video on it. You can tell when I'm doing this recording based on that factor. I'm really interested. This is me recording before I know the answer to this question. I'm really interested in how it performs, right? Because I don't know, it would be, I don't know. Inkbound is fun, but it's kind of at the mercy of the patches. And the patch most recently has not been very good, and it made it very unfun in my opinion, which is unfortunate. So I kind of don't feel like playing it right now. And so I don't know if this if this fares well enough, then I might I don't know try a different series or something. I don't know. Maybe I should go back and do Wilder Myth again. I do have that one new campaign that came out that I never put on the stream. Uh, but anyway, here we are. Look, we're playing Monster Train. We're not playing that other stuff. Let's make it happen. So, hope you're all doing well. I think I already said that, but just in case. Today we are Exile Umbra, Exile Hellhorned. Kind of a weird clan combo. You have imps with plinks. It's fine, I suppose. At a minimum, Hellhorned has good stuff you can put Primordium into, so it should be okay. We have, what is this? Rage Talos, Rage Arcus, and Patient Seraph with Space Prism, Molting Imp, and Prism Retrieval. Nothing here is exceptional. Everything here is pretty mediocre. I mean, like... You know, Space Prism, it's cool. Prism Retrieval, I guess that grabs an Imp. Molting Imp, I suppose that's backline. None of these are the ideal targets or answers for these problems, but they'll get the job kind of done, so it's fine. I'm not mad about it. All of the units and consumes do mean that there won't be many cards left in my deck once I play through once, which is kind of a nice thing. Essentially, the only cards that remain are the Plinks and... Wow, is that true? The Plinks and the Deadweights are literally all that remains in my deck, which is kind of nice, actually. Anyway, this is Trainwreck, self-reminder, 200 shards. Temples today are on 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. Good, so 5 temples gives us a lot of flexibility in this. We also have a ton of units, so I can always do unit infusions if I need to. 
Dupe on eight is magic side, separated from the removals, unfortunately, but otherwise fine. Removal dupe, health on seven. Okay, steel shop over here. It's got cave at least. What else do we get? Money, removal, trinket shop. That's pretty good if I end up on any kind of an imp line because there's a lot of good imp relics I could hit. If I'm not on an imp line, this is not nearly as good because what am I going to do? Go for like morsel relics or something? It does compete with a decent magic shop, so we'll see. Another couple random hell vents with unstable vortices. This is removal dupes on four and five, kind of wild. Note the lack of shops entirely on four. And then note the lack of steel shops on five. There's only that magic shop with a horde. So this means we get double everything early game. It's tough. It does mean we have to go to these steel shops, though, I think. First one of which has Hellhorn banner. Second one is just health. There is an Umber banner on two as well on the magic side and another Hellhorn banner on that magic side as well. So we'll see if we need the infusions. Maybe we get some unit trials and it'll make it okay. Well, I'm going to take Gurg's Goad. Even though I like Split Anvil, I do firmly believe that having multi-strike squared away is good. There are enough Hellhorn banners in my path for me to make some progress here. So even in the worst of cases, I think we're okay. It's just aggressive edible. Cool. I'm not going to go Stalwart Snack here because, well, why would I? I have no stat buffs. It's just kind of garbage. You could eventually see Superfood, but that's super late game. I don't think that's worth it. Take money and move on. Cool. All right. Unit draft. I do have plinks. I have tools to answer this. We should be okay. Yes. All right. Slam downstairs. We're just going to place Primordium. That's kind of annoying, huh? Not a big fan. It's not like I want to feed this to a Queen Zimpling, though. But I suppose I am just going to send some damage down below. A lot of units showing up. Well... We're gonna work on mid floor. I'm gonna draw because it, well, it could see the thing is, is it could have been a good one. I can still get the collector though by playing this train steward in front, so it works out. I was kind of hoping for a molting imp there, but that's fine. We at least get the money, which I'm happy about. Plank, please, thank you, good job. Let's start feeding stuff upstairs. Link here, I suppose. It's fine. Okay, this top floor is scary. All right, great. We get the, the tank that I wanted, right? This was what I was hoping for. One, two, three, four. I can do plink, 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 and we get the kill upstairs. Hey, it's good enough for me. That gets us out of here taking zero, and we also managed to preserve our guy for relentless, which is pretty much exactly what I was hoping for. What am I drawing into? There's probably another train steward coming up. I'll put this guy down here then. Cool. If I see the other train steward, I think we'll be okay. If I don't, it's okay. Yeah. I was like, I need I need a unit is the thing. Once you get a unit in there, it's not so bad. He's only got so much health, but he doesn't have damage, so it's okay. Alright, we get everything. It's awesome. Prismal Dust is excellent. Let me just be clear about that, but there is a really good magic shop coming up on five if I don't have any other options. I think we do take the perils. It's kind of dumb not to, in my opinion. Rage Imp. Yeah, okay. I mean, we click Rage when it shows up. I do think that's a good pick. Sure. Branded Warrior is not ideal, but he's at least a demon. So I guess I'll take him in case I whiff on everything else. We grab this because we're going to the steel shop. If this is like Alpha Fiend plus Demon Fiend, you've only got so many choices, right? So you need to take the Branded Warrior when you see him. Large Stone, Damage Shield 3. Yeah, Rail Beater is much better, though. We'll take the Rail Beater here. Heck yeah. Okay. I am grabbing this Damage Shield 3 in him. That's very good. Am I? I think I am. Is this money? I think I am. I probably large stone this branded warrior and just throw him downstairs a bit. There's money in the middle, right? Let's grab this. Yeah, I'm pretty confident I do this. Big large stone branded warrior. I just debate on who get, if I take this rail beater upgrade. Maybe I go for quick multi. I could reroll this, take either one. Let's do that. In which case this damage shield can go on branded warrior who just kind of chills. He just punches some stuff and that's fine. Hey, quick multi is fine by me. Great. Good job. 
All right, we move on. That's a big upgrade set, but I feel pretty good about it. Arc of Invasion is essentially free. Not necessarily, but essentially. Cool. So the answer then becomes... Railbeater drops in, slaps two guys. We give him the Primordium play. I'm going to drop in Branded Warrior on bottom floor here. Yes, and then I'm just going to play a train steward on that floor and they start crunching stuff. And this will do. Yeah. Cool. Bottom floor is probably going to solo a bunch. Mid floor, give me money. Yeah, we love that. Space Prism upstairs for sure. I think what we do is we Queen Zimpling. This takes all the damage because he was pop pop and then this one hits and it's great and we get a damage shield for free. Good, good. And we just play this and we're good. We're chilling. Cool. Great news. I guess I could drop in this Rage Imp down somewhere. Doesn't really bother me all that much. I think we win on bottom floor. I'm just gonna let it ride. It's it's fine. I'm pretty sure bottom floor crunches. It does, in fact, crunch. Amazing news. Let's just draw a big imp. Get him, big imp. Bam. All right, it doesn't change anything, but it's fine. Yeah, he just punches things. The power of large stone. Incredible news. Gives me everything, basically. It's a very confident combat. I do want to take this mind collapse. I'd like a ping that doesn't suck. And that one indeed does not suck. Hidden passage. It's not terrible. Ritual of battle is probably better. You do want a good minus two target. I think we take the ritual and we move on here. Yeah. Now, I could probably take an endless. I could take a multi strike. We could make some. We could get some damage done with this merchant of steel. I could use some kind of an infusion. That's fine. Steel worker would be good. We could always take the magic shop and buff down the cost on ritual which then lets me get a good x5 so there's a lot of options here i do think i'm going to go to the steel shop simply because i can take two good things here and i'm not seeing one for like three rings so we'll go that route also i have enough money to re-roll so it's good we take the multi good all right we have a fully upgraded dude at least that's something i don't have oh yeah minus two is definitely a slam here Tenon piercing goes in the mind collapse. It's good. We take these when they're shown. There's not much else I'm really tempted for. If I earn money, well, I need 60 gold. But if I somehow pull off 60 gold, we can make it work. Monster rail spike. Sure. Big stew can go punch something. I have enough of those. Now the answer of divinity and seraph becomes the question mark, right? How do I actually solve that problem? I don't have a great solution in the infusion situation right now, but I also don't need to do this now because there are just so many in the late game. So we just kind of chill and look for good stuff. I would take something like a Crucible Warden infusion, I think. Super defense. That would be pretty solid. Blow up bottom floor, please. We're going to stick Branded Warrior down here to face tank some stuff. It'll be fine. Cool. Primordium just kind of lives upstairs. It's fine, I think. I'm guaranteed to get the good stuff either way. Yeah. Plank. Sad. It's okay. We just drop in our guy upstairs. It's fine. Cool. A lot of hits, but we do get a kill, which is nice. This floor is not long for this world, but that's fine. Place down the brand, the Queen's Impling here because it tanks for you. Even though it does give a slay, I'm not mad about it. It's okay. Behold the power of Branded Warrior. He's doing excellent. There's so much damage coming in here. Top floor is fine. What's coming up? Bunch of imps. So you train steward mid floor. We toss it the perils. I'm going to prism retrieval out super imp. That is a super imp. Good grief. Super imp. So this floor now is fine. I'm going to pop one of these goons. And we are okay, I think. Yeah. The quick is nice. Bottom floor is doing his best, but he is going to pass away. I probably just put this train steward upstairs, right? I don't see a reason to do anything else here. 
put the big stat guy up there. I'll plank down here. I could get a morsel. Hey, I did. Great job. I probably should have done that first, but you never know. I can save this if I just drop Mr. Train Steward in, which is actually fine with me. This guy's cruising. I put a nymph down. Oh no, the guy, the protector gets him. It's fine. We actually can get out of here if I ritual upstairs and just slam this guy, and then we guarantee around here, which is pretty funny, because the imp. I didn't need that, but I will take it. Anyway, we win. I have enough rounds. I'm just buying turns at this point. Cool. Good job. She swings once. Neat. All right. We hit enough times. I just need to keep the floor alive. Reinforce? I don't think so. I'm going to grab Impolate because I doubt I'm going to be able to remove all these imps. And I do have a bunch of train stewards to crash through first. This at least does good work for now. Yeah, I mean, Crucible Warden seems good. Five damage shield. And ten. Alright, sure. That's a good infusion, or at least what I'm kind of looking for. Card draw? Card draw, I believe. Okay, we have to answer patient. I go removal dupes, and I think we dupe the ritual. Sure. All right. Fair enough. We'll move. Okay. Give me, like, superfood pivot here. That would solve my problem, right? Yeah, okay. Superfood pivot also does this, right? Because I can just feed him a bunch of... He starts with two damage shield, which at least gets you through patient. And then I can solve this other stuff other ways. This also keeps him alive on divinity for two rounds, which I think is super important. All right. That answers some questions. Let's divine hoard it up. Winged steel. Hard to argue with. Our draw is good, it turns out. Remove Trash, aka Train Stewards. And then the only card really worth duping here is the Ritual, so I am going to just spend 10 shards on that and do it. Okay, moving on. No shops on that floor whatsoever. I think we crushed the Aggressive Amulet thanks to Quick, so I'm not terribly concerned about it. Well... I have a Crucible Warden. Good job, my buddy. There you go, champ. Huzzah. Dab him or something. We did our best. It's, I don't know what anyone expected, but... Let's see. Definitely Brandu Warrior chilling middle. He's got to go down. And then I do need to play the Rail Beater, and then I just eat this per this... Weight of Contrition, I think. I'm at 110 health. I'm not mad about it, you know? It's fine. It is fine. We go... Molting Imp bottom. We go... Weight of Contrition, pop this man in the back on middle, which draws a card. I can then Queen Zimply middle to tank for this. Top floor's chillin', so we just kind of... Play out units, I think. I could have saved that for a future turn, but I'm not that concerned about it. You know, there's only so much you can do. Yeah, punch man. Good job. I can hit one guy here, which is kind of funny. Ritual of Battle is your friend. Space Prism, I suppose. I'm going to put down the Fledgling Imp up here because it does feed this rage forward, which is pretty cool. Mid-floor should crumble under my power. Can I kill him? No. It's fine. Yeah, whatever. I'm not worried about it. I draw a card. That's actually a mistake for me to have done, but you never know. You could always top deck something else. I'm not particularly pressed about it. Blink stuff. There we go, we draw it again. Incredible news. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to Perils of Production here just so that I can Rage. I guess I should have played it in... Whatever. I should have played it on the man that was already stacking Rage. Technically. Oh no, I take Curse Damage for it. I'm pretty confident we get through this. We do a Patrillion Damage. Get me out of here. Thank you. 
Yeesh. Six damage from curses. Three of it I didn't have to take. That was just for me trying to play around some stuff. It's hard to argue with Furnace Tap, but I really think the correct choice on this run has actually got to be Grovel. I don't like it, but I need to have damage damage shield, you know? If I'm not generating damage shield, I feel like we just lose the divinity. This is a great example of, man, wouldn't I like this? I'm going to click for at Furnace Tap, and you're going to probably make me regret it later. Anyway, I just found Tiresome Flame. We're fine. Game is easy. Just hit. Removal dupe? Man, I have no good spells other than this ritual. I really got to go to this magic shop. We're, so we're going to do that. Collection of Tails. Sure, why not? I am generating rage on two units. I was hoping for a minus two, but it's fine. Let's go ahead and do the Crucible Warden Infusion. This is a big improvement because it gets rid of this garbage banner unit that I'm currently chilling around with. All right. Double stack? Hmm, nice. Double stack is good on lots of things. Like this furnace tap could sure use this. The problem is without holdover, this doesn't seem good. Let's go ahead and... Minus one a ritual. There's a lot of stuff I need to consider here, isn't there? This double stack is very good on this ritual. I think double stack is better on the ritual, although what if I put it in the tiresome climb and just daze for four turns? My deck isn't really doing anything otherwise. I just remove a bunch of planks and that's it. We're good. Four days is enough. I don't even need the holdover on it. And then I can hold over the perils. That's much better. Yeah, okay, fine. Reroll this. Okay, we get a remove consume. I don't need this. It's all right. We're going to 20 consume a plink here. I will take this minus one on... The other ritual. I don't mind paying three for this right now. I can solve this problem later. I'm hoping for a minus two on this. And just the rituals being free helps a lot. I'm going to remove some trash like this train steward. And then I probably chill. Money trinket shop. If I get a trial here that gives money, then maybe we go that way. Otherwise, it's magic shop. Let's hold off, right? 28 cards, drawing a bunch. I think we're okay. I get that 6 health back anyway, so it doesn't matter. I have to go to 200, yeah? Plus 30. I should put this in the Mind Collapse. This is just stronger than anything else I could do here. 10 in Piercing. We toss that on Impolate. This is solid, because now it kills those heavies. Very good. Cool. We move on. Alright. 120 here is very scary for Crystal Cloak reasons. I can take a Mark of Invasion. That's good. We didn't get that, but I think we outscale Harpy, especially with the quick, so. Yeah. Crucible Warden Man drops in. He already punches the floor. We then get the Ritual and the Fledgling Imp here. And this just goes off the chain, pretty much. We just completely send this guy downstairs. Cool. Seems good to me. We kill everything, but I think I am going to plink up here. Wow. The plink hit twice in the back. That's 20%. Twice. Why would you do this to me, Mr. Monster Train? Whatever. Just give me the morsels, you goon. It's fine. Ugh. I'll take it. Shoot this guy downstairs. I'll, pu I'll pull the Branded Warrior again next time. I'm not worried about it. I could just furnace tap and never play another card. How do I feel about that? <laughs> you know, this might work out, but it is a little spicy. Almost killed this guy in front. Guess I killed a guy in back down there. It's hard to say no to this. Yeah? Fine. I'll click the button. Okay. Hey, I'll play the ritual here. Sure, that helps. At least I can play these rituals without concern, yeah? All right. I don't get to play cards. And that's just gonna have to be okay. We're still strong enough that I can press end turn here a bunch and get away with it. Rage is good. I can pop at least something to play some units here, which is also nice. Drop some stuff out. Good, great, cool. Yeah, Tom Floor clobbers, which is cool. Unfortunately, I miss the tiresome climb, friend. I mean, we drop in Branded Warrior to do some damage here. It's fine. 
he gets around, I guess. Ritual here. You impolate the boss. I'll toss the prism retrieval. Hey, this works out. I can play a bunch of 10 damagers here and make my redraws a little stronger. I sadly don't get the tiresome climb angle anymore, but we're fine. Yeah. You have to understand, we do so much damage with the melee weakness here that it doesn't take much for this to go crazy. We get out of the combat, no problem. Void binding, I would really like to be able to go this angle. So I do think we want to hunt this magic shop a little bit, look for holdover. The minus ones, 20 consumes, all those things are good. Man, I think that's right. I'm going to go that way. I'm going to take the void binding and we're going left here. Jump in a box is an interesting one because it's never bad. I'll grab it. This is an okay card to have. And I do get some benefit out of it with my impolate. We're going left. I There are imp values that we can have here. I should have looked at this caverns first. That is a mistake, but it didn't punish me. Rage serum. No, it's money. All right, good job. I get 10 gold for an event. Give me a minus two. Hey, we'll take it. Minus two is incredible. This tiresome climb is super online. Purge is also excellent. We just burn out a plink and never think about it again. Great news. And a bunch of 20 consumes would be cool. Yeah, double stack the void binding seems good to me. This is essentially only... I'm going to put it on the furnace tap. This is kind of a finisher. This is better, I think. Let's toss a minus one at the void binding. Reroll this. We see the holdover. All right. I don't feel so bad about some of my decisions anymore. Now, let's make impolate free. And I think we're online here, right? It's just remove garbage, which includes planks. I think this 90 gold removing a plank is one of the strongest things I can do in my run. And we kind of just move on. I could infuse just for removals, which is a serious consideration, by the way. So much more power to be had elsewhere, especially with the duplicate that I'm going to be putting into the tiresome climb. I think we'll just chase the removal dupes, right? I get a removal dupe here, which cuts two garbage units, and then I get a hell vent. We get a dupe on ring eight, which has a magic shop, which maybe has some 20 consumes. Let me think about shards for 10 seconds. The dupe on next floor gets me 10, I think, from... Where are you? Where's my card? Tiresome Climb. Yeah, from this. So it's 10 from here, so I go to 155. Assume I can take all of this and it's 50 with no further infusions and we're okay. I think we cruise. I'm not afraid of Arcus. We're good. He's essentially just a free combat for me right now with the quick and everything. Yeah. Great news. All right, it is my man upstairs. Primordium. We're going to pop Mr. Dimp in a box because it could always be Ray Jimp. But we did hit a Fire Chomper, which is also incredible. We get Branded Warrior middle. Ray Jimp up top is awesome. Big scaling. I'm 100% just dazing this boss up a floor because he takes free hits and that daze is good value for me. Good turn. Getting rage like that on Primordium is pretty big value. We get a ritual here and a void binding that I am just going to slam and you can't stop me and that's going to have to be okay. I'll find the good card eventually. You know, the, the good card being... Carols. Hey, we found it. Play it middle so I don't accidentally incant my floor to oblivion. Cool. We're doing okay. Plank downstairs, plank downstairs. I get a morsel. Good grief. I'm going to play another fledgling imp up here. Morsel middle. Blast the front guy here. True. Play the clean zimpling, kill an enemy, save a bunch of health. Looking okay. Yeah. Cool. All right, we just kind of slam rage up here, and this guy is going to pass away very quickly. Yeah, he takes almost his entire health pool in this floor, so I'm not afraid of Arcus. 
Nor should you, nor should I be, you know? It's like, we're, we're good, we got it, y'all. We did it. That guy's just dead. Plink that out, a ritual upstairs. If he comes back to this floor, he's gonna be having a bad day. Cool. He actually kills somebody, which is pretty neat. Go upstairs, you goon. All right, you regret this. You are a loser, my friend. And you're also dazed. Well done. Cool. Crunch. Cool, so we pre-relentless Arcus, which is pretty indicative of how the rest of this run goes, I think. Furnace Tap, huh? Furnace Tap is another one of these is pretty universally correct, so we're just gonna grab that. That seems good to me. Card draw, more cards, better. Yes. I have excellent card draw here. I go removal dupe action for sure. Just no doubts in my mind. It's a shame about no intrinsic. I'm gonna put a minus two in the furnace tap. That doesn't have a double stack. Maybe I just put it in this one and I dupe it later, actually. That's pretty awesome, in fact. Yeah, I should do this. I was thinking about this one because then you can just send void binding early and still hit this if you draw it before perils, but I think this is just better overall. It's much more accessible. I'm gonna purge a plank. Every one of these that I can get rid of here is excellent. I get to remove trash. Okay. I feel like I should leave in this plink if I'm going to a final magic shop, right? Probably. We do have to dupe the tiresome climb for density. This means eight days on a draw through, which is excellent. I have 30 cards, so I do need to cut stuff. We're going to dump imps, I guess. Not great, but it's fine. Yeah, it's not great, but it's fine. It hurts Impolate. Let's see, what's Impolate at right now? I think it's just barely at the number. It goes to 100 with, like, if I cut one more Imp, it goes to exactly 100, which is about as low as I want it to be. I could, I do get two back from Imp in a box, though, so it's not that bad, but still. Superfood 2 is critical for this. I need the damage shield. This passes at least one damage shield through on turn one on Divinity, and it lets me set up top floor. Very important. And with a dupe and a temple, I think we cruise. I don't have any hard decisions for the rest of this run, I don't think. I would be shocked if I didn't blast Heaven Seal out of the water here. It's Winged Horde. I guess it could be in so many... I don't know. We're fine. This is This is not that scary here. There are so many things I could draft that solve this. Oh my gosh, what a turn one, y'all. It's Railbeater, Primordium, Ritual Opener. Already incredible. But you just send this multi-strike, and this is going to be very silly. I plink just so I can get some stats upstairs. Yeah, okay. Cool. Here's Void Binding, free, which we love to see. I'm gonna activate some imps, even though I can't play this Pyre Chomper or literally anything else. We are pushing big numbers here. I hit the perils, so we cruise. Great work. Good job. Cool. Anyway, we play Molting Imp because it kills itself on one of those guys. We do the same thing with the Queen Zimpling here. Excellent work. I. 95 by 7? Just push this guy upstairs. He's dead. We kill this guy on the next floor. Yeah, I mean, we... When you get a turn like that, you're gonna pop off. There's no doubt in my mind that you go completely unhinged there. Like, seriously, we just... Queen Zimpling up here, which is perfect. Blast on this floor. I'm gonna ascend this guy in the back, because I don't fear. I have no fear here. I'll put the rage in, sure. Draw some stuff, why not? Sure, here you go, bud. Oh no, he passed away. It's fine. I'm not mad about it. Yeah, and then you just casually toss an extra furnace tap in there when you feel like it, and it's okay. Cool. It's good. I, I am hitting for 200 times 10, so I'm not really afraid of anything here. In fact, I really should be putting 
branded warrior on this floor. There is no reason not to. Just load this up. We put the tra this guy in front just to tank the hit. Yeah, blast here. And then I'm pretty confident I could actually just fully ascend this back guy. Yeah, we're fine. I just, the math just checks out here. We're good. <laughs> Have no fear. Yeah, you quad ascend the boss, and then he doesn't even get the turns that he deserves. And you crumble the world. Cool. I think he's dead in one round, right? This is a really good hand. The fact that I can do this with my hand is disgusting. And then I ascend the boss and lose. You know, like you do. Anyway, I think we've got this. Extra void binding. I mean, at this point, just removing stuff and... Only playing the cards I already have is better than taking more. Another tiresome climb. Like, none of these are good cards, but my cards, I'm just, I have the right density. It's better. Removing two is tempting, but really, I, I don't need to do anything fancy. I'm going to pay to remove Plink if I don't hit the 20 consumer or Purge Stone. We just go right. I think this just crunches. It's fine. Purge Stone? I'll take a minus two. Sure, make that free. Great. 195. Got, got a consume for me? Excellent. Plink is out. Great. And I actually get a double stack in the void binding anyway, which is kind of crazy good. No spell chain, but I'm not upset about it. No intrinsic either. Not upset, but you know, it would have been nice. Reroll this shop. Resonant Shard, just do more damage. That seems reasonable to me. The dupe here is... And Furnace Tap is probably the strongest card. I don't need another Tiresome Climb now. I mean, it's got to be Furnace Tap, right? So you go in here. We double stack the Void Binding because big number. Big number good. Wonderful. I actually think this is better than the Furnace Tap here, so I can have a steady supply of big damage shield numbers, which I think are important. Yes, I'll take this. This is good. All right, minus one. I'm going to put a minus one in the Prism Retrieval to play it at zero and get value. Fine. And then I think I go removal here on double imps. It just helps my first draw through. I'm not worried about Impolate because I have the Imp in a box. So we just drop two Queen Zimplings here. Or a Queen Zimpling at least. I don't think I can afford the next one. It's five gold off. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, we're okay. The dupe here does need to give me shards. I think it's got to be Furnace Tap, right? I just don't see it being anything else. Alright, sure, there you go. 205. Is 10 in piercing? Nah, I don't need this. I could infuse. It's a pretty decent way of getting a removal, actually. <laughs> you could put Molting Imp inside a Branded Warrior so he strikes. Which is kind of funny. It's one of those weird tricks that you can do. I think instead I'm just going to put Molting Imp inside of Molting Imp. And take the removal. If I can draw faster, I think we just straight up win. So this 230 shards does not scare me. Does this tenon piercing do anything? No. I could go harder, but I don't think I care. It's fine. We've got it. I'm going to reroll this. Another holdover. Literally nothing can be held over at this point. Incredible. I guess I'm minus one prism. One of the planks. Okay, fair enough. All right, cool. 230 out of 100. Let's go. I think Patient is going to get obliterated. This guy stands no chance. Not only do I have a turn of a bait in the form of Branded Warrior Buddy, we just full send upstairs because I have five free damage shield here, and it's good. Yeah, like, here's Fledgling Imp. Seems good. That's a good opener. Yeah, and then you immediately just open with... Furnace tap? It's good to do. I'm not mad about it. Okay. We just, you just full send. It's fine. You go, oh no, but you don't actually care. And then we 
blink the boss twice because I guess reasons. We have so many turns to set up here that I just... Nothing matters. Hey, space prism. Sure, why not, champ? We just push numbers here. Cool. Eventually, we hit the perils. It's good. We did it. Well done. Oh my gosh, it's an impish scholar. Oh my gosh. What is happening? We're very powerful. We're doing it. Incredible. We're doing it. It's amazing. Impish Scholar is outrageous. Top floor is out of control right now. Yeah, now you just perils up front. We drop in Branded Warrior. We Tiresome Climb the boss up so he gets pummeled. We multi-strike here and he's dead. Good job. <laughs> he's, there you go. That's the scaling we're at. Seven turn boss rush on patient. Seems good. Blank pages seems like chaos, but I'm here for it. Let's go. What's the worst that could happen? I actually don't think there is a downside to this on this particular run. Right? Right. Correct. No reforms or anything I'm relying on. We should just completely obliterate this. I don't see how this goes any other way. It's a bad turn one, actually. Believe it or not. Yeah, it's rough. I mean, we at least see a buff. Oh, actually, I take it back. Perils of production on turn one is pretty neat. Drop this guy downstairs. He's going to pass away, but it's fine. Oh, no, he's gone. Fine. Dentian, go? Question mark? We perils. Dang. We do get the tiresome climb on, but let me tell you, it's a little annoying not having... What's it called? No furnace taps enabled. So we're fast, but we're not gonna really make a lot of progress here. I just fed some armor, it's unfortunate. Yeah, all of them a little late. What is this? Little fade. Oh no, little fade. Yeah, we just drop all of these up front. It's still quite good, but you know, it's not ideal. Pop that guy, it's fine. We plink up here. Hey, we actually killed the dude. That's neat. Get him, morsel friend? Huzzah, imp? Get him, imp, buddy. Nope, not happening. Okay. Yeah, top floor is going to start looking nuts. I didn't hit any of the crazy furnace taps early enough, but we're still pretty relentless. I have little to note, little fear in this matter. Hey, look. Had a fledgling imp and a welder helper. Heck yeah. Look at this. We got a shard tail queen. We're on we're on we're going cracked. Amazing. Now, do I just win if I ascend one of these goons? I do, actually. Alright, we did it. <laughs> Good job. Alright, well, hey, we got shard tail queen and then the run ended. It sometimes it happens that way. It's not a big deal, really. Fair enough. That's one of the fastest runs of Monster Train I have played in a good long while. As it turns out, Primordium is good. Good boss. Good champion. Feels nice to just be able to send it like that. The quick really helps here. I mean, when they put it in perspective, it's all about the Gurg Goad, right? The Gurg's Goad gives you that extra slot of whatever, right? You're not worried about, oh, do I hit multi-strike or not? I mean, if you take, if you do, you take it. But you don't need it. So you can then answer all the other problems instead. It's really good. It's a very high scoring run. 76.6k. Wow. With those pre-relentlesses on the Divinity and Seraph, I mean, I also pre-relentlessed Arcus. This is a very high scoring run for Monster Train. Even 230 shards here. Wow. It's really, it just comes down to Gurg's go, draw a million times, eventually I hit the holdover. So it all went downhill from there with a whole nonsense number of void bindings and furnace taps. It wasn't even as fast on the divinities it could have because of draw order. If I'd hit the furnace tap one turn earlier, we would have been looking at what, like an extra two hits and it would have finished in a turn earlier or whatever. But yeah, this is a classic example of primordium aggressive just to hold out the early game and then you double superfood, lean into rage floor, go crazy. Just truly go out of your mind here. Unbelievable. 
What a good run, y'all. This is this is excellent. All right. Well, I really don't have a lot to say here other than if you could do this every run, you should. I think the one thing I will talk about, though, is I think people undervalue Quick in general. I think that there's a lot of people go, oh, yeah, Quick Sweeper. It's good, right? It, it makes sense, right? You want to hit everything first. It's got that classic appeal. But I think people underestimate Quick on just your carry in general, something like a rail beater here. They might have skipped and looked for something else. I actually think Quick is one of the most compelling parts of this run here and is probably the main thing I was looking for. Multi-strike is good and all, but if I die before I hit, then what's the point? So this clears entire waves comfortably, just comfortably. So yeah, very strong. Big fan of this setup. So yeah, nothing too crazy here, but a very solid Superfood Primordium run all the same. One of my highest scoring runs, I think, of all time. So excellent. Anyway, that's all I've got for you, so I will let you go there. So yeah, hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like or a dislike if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.